people on the internet never cease to entertain us. Here are 20 confessions from Reddit. I controlled my neighbor's TV for six months for my phone and made him sell the TV. Now I regret it. Last year, I had a jerk neighbor who would always be playing loud music, be rude to everyone, and not pick up his dog's poop when they would go for walks right outside the building. The dog had a barking problem too, but I'm not hating on the dog. One evening, I had problems with the internet, and just for the heck of it, I tried to connect to my neighbor's Wi-Fi with the password 01234 Guess what? It connected. The same evening at 11 p.m., I started hearing crappy drum and bass from my neighbor's apartment as usual, and all of a sudden, I see a pop-up appear on my phone. I have a Samsung phone, and when you open the YouTube app on any Samsung smart TV, a pop-up appears on your phone with the TV-casted YouTube app as long as both devices are on the same Wi-Fi network. You have full control of TV YouTube on your phone. Pause, play, volume, skip video if it's a playlist, choose a different recommended video, etc. At first, I did not realize what the pop-up was and just thought, what the heck is this? I thought my phone was glitching. There were options, pause, forward, volume, etc. I pressed pause and all of a sudden there was silence in my neighbor's apartment. After a few seconds, the music started again and I saw that the play button turned to a pause button again on my phone. I press pause again, music disappeared, and behind the wall I hear, what the fu? I cannot describe the feelings I had in that moment. My facial expression must have looked like that Chris Pratt meme from Parks and Rec. The music started playing again, and again I pressed pause. Now I'm hearing grunts and profanities from my neighbor. I could feel his confusion and anger through the walls. I had never felt so much power in my life. God, universe, or whatever you want to call it, had blessed me with a gift. I kept fucking with him that evening. Pause, skip video, turn the volume up and down. He tried turning the TV on and off, logging in and out of his YouTube account, and nothing seemed to work. He was so pissed off. Ah, it was the first time I was so happy that the walls in our building are so thin. This went on for days. Turned out, he mostly used YouTube on his TV to watch videos, podcasts, even to play music. He was going completely insane. He did switch to Spotify, I'm guessing, for music, but still, every time he wanted to switch to a podcast or some videos, I was there, ready and waiting for him to feel my wrath. Throughout the next few months, I heard him call customer support multiple times, making him reset the TV, factory settings, logging in and out of the YouTube app countless times. Sometimes I would stop messing with it for a couple days to give him false hope. Then all of a sudden, I would hear him watching some comedy podcast that he's enjoying and start playing another video for him. He would literally scream. Long story short, after six months of this, I'm walking down the hallway and I see a random couple carrying the TV out of his apartment and him holding cash in his hand. I drove him to selling the TV and buying a new one. In that moment, I felt bad and started to regret my actions. I felt kind of childish about the fact that I had been doing this for six months. When I was a hotel housekeeper, I slacked massively on nearly every room. I got laid off from my job two summers ago, and it sent me into a tailspin, to be honest. I was super depressed, and the only job I could get was a hotel housekeeping job. It was the worst two months of my life, and I quit quickly. While I was there, I was extremely depressed and couldn't get myself to do anything correctly. I just didn't care. On different occasions, I didn't replace sheets. I didn't wipe down clean-looking counters. I didn't replace clean looking towels. I didn't mop if it didn't look bad, etc. I took any shortcut I could. I quit after only two months and I still feel bad. I threw cooked greasy bacon out of a balcony on innocent people. A French guy I met on Tinder invited me to his place after we had a coffee date earlier that week. He said he was going to cook dinner for me. I liked the offer and agreed to come over. I know it was only our second date, but hey, he was hot and he was French, don't judge. I was actually pretty excited. No guy had ever cooked for me and I was waiting with anticipation for the evening. What is he going to cook? Is it going to be a cool French dish? Is he going out of his way and preparing something romantic? I didn't eat much that day because in my mind I was expecting this amazing dinner. I arrived at his place, he met me in the lobby and we walked up to his apartment. As we entered the kitchen, I was anticipating a smell of food and a prepared table, but there was no sign that he had cooked anything. Oh, he probably wants to cook something together, I thought to myself. At that point, I was already very hungry, but no big deal. He started talking to me about some random stuff. My stomach just kept growling, and after about five minutes, I gave him a little hint. So when's dinner coming, haha? 
Oh yeah, I suppose you're hungry. He then walked up to the fridge, opened it, and told me to come over. I was thinking to myself, what the heck? Now I was standing next to him, and what I saw were half-empty shelves with small bags of random vegetables and an extremely questionable packet of bacon that was already grayish in color. All products had big orange discount stickers that are used to sell off food that's about to expire. He started taking everything out of the fridge and uttered a sentence that blew my mind. So here's some food you can cook. I was gobsmacked, flabbergasted, and speechless. He continued, the vegetables are a few days past the expiry date. Oh wait, the bacon too. Anyway, it's fine. It's still totally edible. You see, I always buy food that is about to expire because I hate food waste. It's so messed up, blah, blah, blah. He basically gave me a lecture on how humanity is messing up the environment. He finished with, so yeah, anyhow, here are the ingredients. Use these plates and here's the pan. Cook all the bacon. I'll only eat two pieces. The rest is yours. I need to take the laundry out of the washing machine and hang it for drying. He went off to the bathroom, and I was just standing there, speechless, feeling a mix of rage, confusion, and betrayal. I'm looking at a soft, soggy carrot, a tomato that's about to turn itself into ketchup, and bacon that's about 10 minutes away from rotting. The most messed up part is I actually started to cook the bacon. It was one of those moments when something takes you by such surprise that you go into this almost trans-like state, and you're so confused that you just go with the flow. Now the bacon was cooked, I smelt it and gagged, it literally smelled like old meat, even after cooking. At this point, all my rational thinking was out the window. I was panicking. One thing I knew for sure was that I'm not eating that bacon and getting food poisoning. I was evaluating my options. Trash can. Ah, no, I can't. It's empty. He'll notice, and God only knows how he'll react. I'm pacing around the kitchen with a plate of four bacon strips in my hand. I lift up my head and realize there's a balcony coming out of the kitchen slash living room. I run out on the balcony, and after hesitating for a couple of seconds, I just chucked the bacon over the rails as hard as I could and ran back into the kitchen. The balcony was on the fifth floor facing the street with many people and a lot of traffic. After another five minutes, he returned to the kitchen. Oh, you already ate? Did not wait for me? I just replied that I was super hungry. He took the plate where I'd put the two remaining bacon strips and ate them. I almost puked just looking at him. Long story short, he kept talking about random stuff, mostly about his world views, while I was sitting there still hungry AF and getting angrier by the minute. I started coming back to my senses and realized, what the heck am I doing here? Thank God he needed to go to the bathroom. I quickly grabbed my jacket, put on my shoes, and bounced without saying goodbye. Looking back in hindsight, I feel bad that I didn't just confront him in the beginning which resulted into me having a brief mental breakdown and throwing bacon on top of people's heads. Even taking into consideration that I was too scared to confront him, the obvious thing to do was to sneak out while he was doing the laundry. I was in too much panic to make rational thoughts. You live and you learn. A woman asked me to buy her groceries. I accepted, and then I ran away from her. I was at a train station and had to pick up my sister at the airport, already slightly late. I had 20 minutes before catching the train to go to her. The next one would have been 40 minutes later. While waiting, I was approached by a woman about 25 to 30 years old with her little daughter. She asked me to buy some groceries for her so that she and her daughter could eat. I tried to give her money instead, but she insisted I accompanied her. So I agreed, but I explicitly told her that I couldn't take more than 15 minutes because of the train, and she accepted. I regretted it almost instantly. She took a cart and started basically ransacking the supermarket, taking in, apart from lots of the normal groceries, pans, pots, glasses, several four-packs of Red Bulls, lots of junk food, and so on. I roughly counted the expenses, and after a good 10 minutes, it was amounting to already 200 euros. Furthermore, at the 13-minute count, she was still taking her time with no end in sight. Stressed out at the thought of missing my train, having a public confrontation, and being unpolite to someone in difficulty, I just ran away. I don't know whether I should, but months later, I still think about it and feel bad about it. I robbed the mailman for her master key so I can steal mail. I feel ashamed and paranoid. I saw a woman drop her glasses at the DMV and I didn't do anything about it. She stood up after getting her picture taken and the glasses fell. I figured she'd notice, so I ignored it, but I watched her walk past them when she was done at the counter and walk out. They're still on the floor and I feel horrible for not saying anything. She was maybe in her 60s, so she'll be looking for them later and might not remember having taken them off at the DMV. I could have spared her so much worry, but I just did nothing. 
I cut into a funeral procession on the road to get onto the highway the other day. Okay, first off, when did funeral processions stop with the little flags on the cars? I grew up immediately able to recognize a funeral procession because there would be a line of cars driving really slowly, all with little orange or black flags following the hearse. Like, you immediately knew and you immediately respected that, hey, this is part of a funeral, don't be a jerk. But no, I guess they don't do that anymore? Or I'm in the South now and maybe they just don't do that here? I'm driving home from work and decided to take this little side route to cut through the next three exits of traffic, then merge back onto the highway. It usually saves me about five to ten minutes, and so it's just a habit at this point. I turn onto the road that's going to take me back onto the highway, and I see the car in front of me with hazards on, so I'm immediately like, skirt and get over into the passing lane. Then I see the next car in front of them has their hazards on going really slow, and I'm like, well, that's weird. There must be something in the road. So I'm going a little slower, but still going the speed limit. I look up the road and just see a long line of cars, all with hazards on, and I don't know why funeral procession didn't cross my mind until I'm cutting back into the lane, two cars behind the hearse, to get back onto the highway. I can only imagine what was going through everyone's head as I completely disrespectfully zipped through a funeral procession. But can we be real here? Why were there no flags? This was a couple days ago, and I still feel like a total jerk about it. I stole a hair blow dryer from a homeless person last week. I know how it sounds, but look, money has been so tight lately, and I just began dating this girl who has an amazing app. And lately, she's been so mad that I haven't been paying for anything when we go out. I tell her I'm trying, as unlike her, I don't have roommates and have car payments, but anyway... She was going on about how I don't have a hair blow dryer at my place, and if I was nice, I'd get her one. It just so happens, a couple days later, I saw this homeless person's cart with a whole bunch of random stuff, including two hair blow dryers. I decided that there's no way this guy needs two. He was around the corner by the drive through panhandling. I just took the nicer blow dryer and hopped in my car and drove away. Slightly quicker than I would have if I didn't just steal a homeless guy's blow dryer. He didn't see me, but a lot of other cars were looking and saw one person laughing at me, but I managed to tell my girl I bought her a blow dryer from a second-hand shop, even though I actually stole it. If the guy only had one, I might have thought twice, but he had two. I used to do doormat switcheroos to my apartment neighbors. When I was a tween, like say 11 or 12 years old, I lived in the fourth floor of a musty apartment. A lot of people had doormats despite there being carpet in the hallways of the apartments. Anyway, I thought to myself one day, hey, what if I just switched the doormats around? So I did. I just grabbed two neighbors' doormats and swapped places with each other to mess with them. And I kept doing it. After they put their doormats back, I took them and swapped them around with other people's doormats. Sometimes I would take their doormat and place it in front of some random spot in the hallway, not even in front of a door, or I would hide it in the stairwell. I kind of regret that because one of the poor victims was a neighbor of mine that I like. And also, because it's kind of just stupid. I would be a little bit confused if my doormat kept switching places or disappearing. Especially because those things are just overly expensive for no reason. Also, because I would do that and not even wash my hands afterwards. Like, yeah, good going, 11-year-old me. Put your grubby hands on a surface that has been stepped on by a hundred dirty, muddy shoes and then not wash your hands afterwards. Oh well. I left a job, and then I changed everyone's passwords. I don't even care that this was immature and petty of me. I can't stress how awfully I was treated in this job and how the entire team joined in on it. I was the only woman on the team, so it could have been that, but I don't want to play the gender card. You're probably thinking it's not one-sided, but it was. I was never rude to these guys. I'm not too fond of confrontation, so I used to be a doormat. I was afraid to rock the boat, so I just accepted how I was treated because I needed a job desperately at the time. One evening, I decided it was the last straw. I went home for the night and never went back. I got various calls from them all on WhatsApp asking why I hadn't shown up and I ignored it. Like I said, I can't handle conflict very well, so I couldn't face talking on the phone to them because I was already very upset from the evening before. A week after I quit my job, I realized I was still logged onto my manager's account and he hadn't changed the password. This account was basically the restaurant's entire database. It had information from menus, staff, ordering, stock, etc. I decided to change the email to a fake one I'd made. And then I changed everyone's password so they couldn't access it. I don't know what happened after that. Nobody ever contacted me. I don't know whether I was ever a suspect or not. 
I don't go to that part of town anymore. It was me that moved your garden gnome every night. When I, 42 male, was in my 20s, I worked at a nightclub and used to walk home with a couple of co-workers pretty much every night at roughly 3 a.m. On the way home, there was this one garden that was always perfect. It had a little pond with a gnome. One of those that had a fishing pole, you know the type, right? Well, one night we decided it would be fun to move said gnome to a neighbor's garden. No damage, we're not heathens, lol. The next night, said gnome was back in its place as if nothing had happened. So of course we moved it again to a different neighbor's garden. And we continued to do this every time we walked home, normally at least four or five times a week for like six to eight months or so. I hope we didn't annoy you too much and you took it in the spirit it was meant. It always made us smile to see him back in his original place. Edit. Thank you guys and gals. The responses have made me smile so much. I'm really glad that there's still room for this sort of prank in the world. I like to think that the owner had kids or grandkids and always wanted to hear about the travels of the magical gnome. I was a janitor and lived rent-free in the janitor's closet. I worked as a janitor in a school. There was a dedicated janitor's closet, which was quite spacious. After I had finished vacuuming all the classes in the afternoon, I had to turn the security system on and leave within one minute. There was a caveat, though. The front gate and the dedicated janitor's closet were exempted from the motion cameras. I couldn't justify, or afford, spending half of my paycheck a week for what should be a human right, shelter, so I did what I had to do and simply lived in that closet. I saved over $20,000 in rent. I installed a mini fridge and an air fryer and had quite the time. The contract got changed, so I lost that gig. I feel a bit bad for freeloading off the school, but the government can provide insulated sheds to all of its citizens for a few billions, but would rather spend much more on W.A.R. and overinflated salaries for its oligarchs. I wouldn't do it again. Best commute ever, though. I pretend I don't speak English to avoid talking to strangers. Whenever people I don't want to talk to approach me, I act confused and I talk in Pig Latin. Surprisingly, a lot of people think I'm speaking Spanish, even though they don't sound anything alike. I ate my co-workers' Pop-Tarts and couldn't man up to it. Not a very exciting one. It's been a decade. I just want to get this off my chest. I was working a slightly above minimum wage retail job towards the end of my undergrad. I put on appearance like it's all rainbows and sunshine, but I was struggling financially. I was always hungry. We had unassigned lockers to put your stuff in at work, and you're not supposed to leave anything behind after work. One day, I saw Pop-Tarts in a locker, door ajar. It was an opening shift. Nobody was around. Also, I didn't think anybody was going to miss their Pop-Tarts, so I ate them. Later that day, a coworker complained to the manager somebody stole his snacks. I don't know why I didn't say anything, basically denied it. He told the manager he was really going through a lot and can't believe people would do that to him. The manager promised to check the camera and would get back to him later. I'm sure the manager saw what happened. I don't know if she told him, but on the surface, she never mentioned it to anybody that it was me. I'm still feeling so guilty, but none of the people I knew there are still in my life. Wish I could just go back and be honest about what happened. I removed the rat poison from the set traps to save birds of prey. I've been removing the poison from these rat traps around my area for years because I've seen it kill squirrels, hawks, and falcons, and I'm not okay with that. Let nature do its thing. I've started stealing from a luxury grocery store every day. I've always been a goody two-shoes. I've always lived by the book. Sometimes it feels like it never works, though. That no matter how good I am, I always get screwed in the end. My career is not panning out how I want it to. I have no relationship. Work in a crappy in-between retail job. Working random days, including weekends. And live in a city that I'm not too sure I want to live in anymore. I was working. Life felt like it was coming to a head. Nothing was going right for me. So during my break, I went to a nearby luxury grocery store. Don't worry, it isn't independent. It's corporate, but it's luxury. They had amazing peaches. I just wanted one. The line to weigh produce was like 15 minutes long. It was going to be well past my break. So I took it. And now I've begun to take one almost every day. No one cares. No one's paying attention. Now you might think, that's not that big of a deal. It's just a peach. But for me, it's almost taking my power back from an indifferent world. I let someone take the blame for a smashed-in car door. Then I collected the insurance. So this was almost 20 years ago, so the statute of limitations has long expired. 
Back then, I was driving a Mercury Tracer with a large dent on the passenger side door. Actually, the door was pretty much smashed in, and I didn't have the money to fix it. One day, I left the car in a business parking lot while attending to something nearby. When I came back, someone had left a note on the window. The note was from someone who believed they backed into my car and caused the dent. She explained she wasn't paying attention and wanted to exchange insurance info. Now, this is probably one of the worst things I've ever done, but I went along with it. I'd never reported my car damage, so it wasn't documented anywhere, so I moved forward with the insurance claim. Here's where it gets interesting. Some time goes by, and I get a call from the lady's insurance to set up a time for their adjuster to come out and look at it. I didn't know it at the time, but usually adjusters are pretty good at finding fraud. They know what to look for, and if something looks suspicious, they might investigate and even pursue legal action. I was clueless to all of this, so the next day, a younger lady arrives and wants to look at my car damage. I play it cool, I happily answer her questions, but refrain from any unnecessary details or explanations. I let her do most of the talking and give straightforward answers. As she inspects the damage, she looks at me and says, Hmm, I've never seen damage like this before. She was referring to the body side molding. It wasn't just smashed in. It also looked like parts of it had melted. What I think had actually happened was the molding became weakened when the actual damage occurred months before. Since I continued to drive the car normally, it was exposed to the summer heat and melted over time. The original smash bent it out of shape and the deformed molding became much more vulnerable to heat. So anyway, when she said that to me, I looked at it and said, huh, I don't know, maybe the sunlight melted it or something? We were in the middle of 100 degree plus days. I received a check for the full damage amount shortly after. Of course, the money was nice, but now I wish I hadn't done that. So anyway, that's my story about being a criminal. I used to throw apples at drunk college kids. I live in a small town. It has a college and a lot of bars, so a lot of the college students get drunk and walk the streets. Well, when I was younger, there was a crab apple tree on the corner. We would collect as many apples as we could in our shirts and drive around and throw them at drunk college students. We always aimed for the feet or right in front of them to scare them. But one time, we accidentally hit someone's bike wheels as they were riding and it made them fall. He chased us around and threw the apple at our car. I stole so much food when I was a store manager at Subway. I worked as a general manager for a Subway about four years ago. They paid me crap and I couldn't afford anything. I quit after three months as I couldn't survive off the pay anymore. During the last month, I stole so much food and I'm not just talking two sandwiches here and a bag of chips there. I had control to the cameras and would turn them away from the parking lot when I did this and the district manager never noticed as he rarely watched the cameras anyway. There were 15 stores in his area too. I would take packs of salami, pepperoni, lettuce, cookies, boxes of chips, etc. Whatever I could eat at home. My food costs went up some, but I didn't care. My district manager didn't ask me about it until a few days before I planned on quitting. I had a meeting with my crew about watching their waste, knowing darn well they weren't. But my last day, I took so much stuff. I went back the next Friday to get my check, and the district manager didn't say anything. Nobody ever said anything. I probably took close to $1,000 in food from that store. I gave a lactose intolerant customer dairy on purpose. I know this sounds weird, but when I worked at Starbucks, there was a regular customer that was very difficult and rude. I was warned of this customer on my first day of training. She came in every morning and would try to rush the workers on doing their job and make customers feel uncomfortable. Three months into working, she came in one morning and caused absolute hell. She was complaining about her drink while one of my coworkers was making the drink. As soon as she got it, she accidentally spills and asks for a completely different drink. I was so fed up. She wanted a frappuccino. She went to the bathroom while we were making the new order. I switched with my coworker and made the drink. Instead of almond milk, I made the frappuccino with regular milk. The drink was ready by the time she left the bathroom. She takes the drink and takes a sip and didn't complain. Five hours later, she calls the Starbucks from the hospital and I was the one who picked up. She got in a car accident trying to rush to the bathroom. She said she pooped her pants. I couldn't be any more happier that she was safe got her karma. 